Hello everyone and welcome to another Pixo 3D tutorial. Today I'm really excited to be showing you this loopable physics animation in Blender 2.83. It's just a nice little animation, something that would be really fun to add to your portfolio as a beginner even. Um, so it's not too complicated. Um, I'm going to be going from the very beginning from a default cube to this finished product that you see here. So this is the, the project file. Um, I will be making this available on Patreon for the Patreons. So you guys who are on Patreon, just check that out. Those of you who aren't, you can check that out in the link below if you're interested in supporting me on Patreon. Anyway, let's not waste time. Let's get into this tutorial. Okay, so if a brand new scene opened up in Blender, go ahead and delete everything in your scene so you have a nice empty scene. I'm using Blender 2.83, but uh, even Blender 2.81 or 2.82 should be fine for this. So let's start by going Shift A, and we're going to go to our mesh options here. Then we're going to go down and add in a cylinder. And we want to come down to our cylinder settings here, and we want to make the vertices 12. So type in 1, 2, and hit Enter. And then what we're going to do is go to our front orthographic view, tab to edit mode, and then go G. Z, hold in the control so it snaps to the grid floor here. And then what we're going to do is just make a rough balling pin. So I'm just going to make one kind of off memory, but you guys have the freedom to go ahead, go on Google, get some reference images. So yours doesn't have to be as crude as mine. So I'm just going to go ahead, control R, add in a loop cut here. Select these bottom vertices, bring them in. Select these top vertices, bring them in like so. And then go E to extrude up to here. E to extrude up and then scale it in a little bit, and then E to about here and scale it, and then E up, and then E one more time, and then S to scale. So we're just making this little thing at the top, and then we're gonna add in some more geometry here. So go Control R, add in the loop cut, scale it up, Control R, double click, add in the loop cut. And I'm just making a really, really rough balling pin. It's definitely not um, a very fancy one, but I'm just keeping it simple for this tutorial. Select these vertices at the top. You can enable proportional editing if you want, so you can kind of like drag these around a little bit more. Um, anyway, I'm just going to leave it at this. I'm going to go disable my proportional editing, go Control R, maybe just add in a loop at the bottom here, double G, just to slide it down to here. The reason I'm doing that, so when I go in here and add in a subdivision surface, it um, will make it a little bit tighter down there. So I'm going to just go ahead with that done and apply this modifier with a viewport of one. Tab into edit mode again, and then I'm going to go into my wireframe and just box select these bottom vertices, then go S, Z, 0, and hit enter to make them flat, and then go G, Z, and hold in control and just snap them down to the bottom here, like that. Okay, so we should have something that looks like this. We want it to be nice and flat. We don't want any twisted or crooked geometry, otherwise, it's not going to work very well because it's going to be we're going to be doing a rigid body where it's a mesh on mesh contact, we're not going to be using convex hole, anything like that. Okay, so let's go and go to our object, go to our shade smooth. So now we have some nice sh sh smooth shading. And we're also going to just add some materials quickly because we're going to be duplicating this, we're going to just add some placeholder materials. So this is not anything like fancy at the moment, just placeholder. So go new. And this is call this one white. And then I'm going to go um, so by default, because this is the only material on here, it'll be applied to this. So we're going to go hit the plus button here, go new, assign, and let's just call this one red and hit enter. And then let's go down and let's make the viewport display something like a red color. And then what I'm going to do is go to my face select, hold in shift and alt, and just select two of these loops here, like so, and then just apply that red material. So click on it and go assign. So now when we duplicate this, we don't have to go in later and add these materials to every single one. So just get it all off the way. And not a nice thing about having it kind of have already like a bit of geometry. So we don't have to get give it get it low poly and then add any modifiers to it. I find that simulations in Blender work a lot better when you don't have any modifiers applied, um, especially like subdivisions and stuff like that. So we just have this here ready to go. So what I'm going to do is scale it down a bit. So to get some reference, I'm going to go Shift A, go to my mesh options, add in a cube. Then I'm going to go into my wireframe, grab this guy here and just scale it down. So this guy is as high as half of this cube, roughly. With that done, I'm going to select this cube and then go X and delete. So now that I have this guy, I want to make sure I apply the scale, very important, especially if we're going to be doing any sort of simulation, always apply. So go Control A and apply that scale. If you've um, rotated it, make sure to apply the rotation as well. Okay, so that's done now. What we can do is start duplicating this guy. So what I'm going to do is go to my top view 
And you can use an array, but you don't even have to. What I like to do is just go Shift D and then X and move this guy to the right a little bit and then let go. And then if you go Shift R, it'll repeat that action. So I'm gonna make five of these. So one, two, three, four, five. Then I'm gonna select four of them, go Shift D and just move them over here at the front. Deselect one and then go Shift D and I'm just building like a little pyramid here. Deselect one of these, Shift D and then do it one more time, Shift D and just move this guy here. So now we have this, our bowling pins. I'm gonna select all of them by hitting A and then go G, X and just move them to the middle of our scene like that. And that is really good. So I'm gonna grab one of these guys. I'm gonna grab the one at the front. Um, actually, before we add the modifiers, um, the physics, I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna shift A, add in a cube, then go S, Y and just scale it into Y a little bit. Then S, Z, scale it down like this. Go G, Y and move it back to here. Then I'm gonna go G, Z and move it up. So this is gonna kind of be like a plank that's gonna be pushing our little bowling pins here. And we want it to be wider than the back row here. So we're gonna go S, X and you scale it up. So as long as it's just wider than that, that's fine. So we're gonna leave it here. Go Control A and apply the scale. Go to your modifiers. We're gonna add a bevel. Make the limit method angle and just make decrease this value here a little bit on the offset. So we don't have such a big bevel and just increase the segments. Now you can go ahead and just go object and enable shade smooth. And let's just give this guy material because we're gonna be duplicating it and we don't wanna add materials over and over. So I'm gonna go to my viewport and just for now kind of give it like a pinkish or orangey color, whatever, just give it a color for now. And then I'm gonna go shift A, add in a plane and with that plane selected, and this is very important, okay? We wanna scale it eight times. So go S, eight, and hit enter. If you want this to work, it needs to be exactly what I just said, S8. So scale it up eight times. And then what we're gonna do is um, to make this work a little bit better as well, just grab, give this guy a material for now. So I'm just gonna go new material like that. And then what I'm gonna do is go A to select everything in the scene, okay? And this is very important. Once we do this, we can't move any of these things because what's gonna happen, this scene that we're duplicating is gonna be exact replica. So make sure everything is in the position you want okay, before you duplicate it. What I might do is just go G, Y, and just move this guy back a little bit to about there. So select everything by hitting A, and then what we're gonna do is go on our top orthographic view and then go Shift D, holding in control and move this guy to the left of us till it snaps perfectly against that one. That's very, very important. Okay, so this one now is a replica. And then what we wanna do is grab this plane here. I forgot to actually do this step, so let's just quickly do that. So I'm going to grab, um, go into edit mode on this plane, grab this um, edge select here, grab this edge, and then double G just to slide it to the edge here. So just behind those bowling pins, and then go E, Z, and bring this down like that. Okay, so just quickly delete this one, shift D, hold in control to snap this to the side here. Okay. Just like that, so it needs to be perfectly snapped to the end of that one. And now we can um, add in our camera. So I'm gonna kind of come over here. Then I'm gonna go Shift A and add in a camera. I'm gonna go zero to go into my camera view, then G, hit my middle mouse wheel and just kind of pull back for now. Just to something like this. Go to my um, output settings. I'm gonna make the Y value here 1920, so I have a square aspect ratio. And then what I'm gonna do is go to my camera settings. And I'm gonna go over really high focal length. So I'm gonna type in 95, okay? And then go G, middle mouse wheel. I'm just gonna pull it back till I get something that I like. So I'm gonna go maybe with a view like this. For now, that's fine. And then I'm just gonna go Shift A, mesh, add in a plane. I'm gonna scale this guy up quite big. It doesn't have to be anything specific. Go G, Z, bring it down to here and then go S, X, and you scale it along the X. So that's just gonna be like a floor in the bottom there. So we don't see into our world space. It's just gonna give us some background. Okay, so that's really good. So I'm gonna quickly grab these two planes, grab this guy here as well, and then go M and just move them to a new collection. And let's just call this floor and go okay. And let's just hide that for now up here in our collection. So it gives us a bit more space to work. So let's quickly do our simulation. So I'm gonna grab this bowling pin here at first. Then I'm gonna to go to my rigid body. So just pay attention here. So you follow this exactly. So we're gonna go here to our physics settings. I'm gonna give it a rigid body. 
We're going to leave the type as an active and the weight, we can leave it one kilo. But what we want to do is come down to shape and we want to make it mesh. That's very important. If you do convex hole, it's going to be too approximated and it's not going to be a very accurate one. So go ahead and make that mesh very important. Now we could go and add it to all of these, but a really quick way to do that is just to make sure, select this guy first and then just go C to select the rest of these here. So you can see this one here is a lighter kind of orange because it's the active selection compared to these guys here. And with that done, we're going to go F3 on a number pad. We're going to type in here copy and then type in um, rigid body. So just type in R and it should come up with the copy rigid body settings. And now all of these have that same settings and you don't have to do it individually. A big time saver. I used to do that for years before I figured it out. So I hope that helps you. So now I'm going to just quickly um, click on here to bring the floor back into my scene. And we don't have to add any physics to these guys here. So just this side. So I'm going to grab this guy here and we need to make this a rigid body because the bowling pins do need to react. So I'm going to make that a rigid body. Make sure you make the type passive. You don't want to leave it at active. Make it passive and then do the same thing here. Make it mesh. Okay. And if we did play this now, we should see those bowling pins kind of standing. Um, but they're bobbing around a bit and the way we fix that is to come here with our plane selected to our sensitivity. And we want to make that zero. And we also want to grab this first bowling pin. And I forgot to do this at first, but just make that margin zero as well. So if we play it now, that one shouldn't be bouncing around as much, but the others are. So let's just apply that as well. So I'm just going to select those ones as well and just to do what we did earlier. So I'm just going to hide the floor. And with this one where I just made that margin zero, I'm going to apply to the rest of them. So C to select the rest. This one is the active one. So I'm going to go F3 and just go copy rigid body settings again. So now all of these should also have a margin of zero. So if I bring back my floors and I play it now, um, these guys should not be bouncing around as much. Okay, that's really good. Now I'm going to grab this bar here. I'm going to go to my rigid body settings and I'm going to make this guy a passive as well. And we're going to make the shape here a uh, mesh. So make sure you make it mesh. And now let's just quickly do a quick animation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my end frames here 60 long. So type in 60. And then what I'm going to do is go to my first frame. And on frame one, with this guy selected, I'm going to go I and insert a location key. And then what I'm going to do is drag this slider all the way to 30. And on frame 30, I'm going to go G, X, no, G, Y, and just drag this to the end here. Okay, so the, to the ledge at the end here. So it's going to push all of them off. And then with it on frame 30 in this location, I'm going to go I and insert a location key. So we should see this now. Okay, but at the moment there's no simulation happening. And the reason is whenever we animate mesh and we add a rigid body simulation, we have to come in here to the settings and enable animate it. And I'll explain in a, some other tutorial at some point why we have this, because sometimes you want to animate something, but you don't want it to have the effect of the rigid body yet. So that's why we have this little tick and you can even um, keyframe that if you wanted to. But anyway, let's just quickly try this out. And there we can see it's now working beautifully. So if we look in our camera view, we should see this. Perfect. Okay, so now what we simply have to do is make our camera, after this one happens, move to the new fresh scene and make it look seamless. So what we're going to do is add in a empty. So we're going to go Shift A, add in a empty, and it's very important, select a cube. And this is very important. We need to scale this up eight times, just like we did to our floor. So we're going to go S, eight, and hit Enter. So it's just the exact same size as our floor plane we created originally. And what we're going to do is grab this camera and then holding shift, select this um, empty here and then go control P and go object, keep transform. So now that camera is parented to this. And what we want to do is on frame one with this guy selected the empty, we want to go I and insert a location keyframe. Then we want to drag our slider through and wait till our simulation, just go into your camera view. So you want to drag it to a point where you see that your simulation is almost done. So for me, I'm going to make that frame 40. And in frame 40, I'm going to hit I again to insert a location key. So it's going to be a hold. It's going to stay in that position. And then what I'm going to do is go all the way to frame 60. And on frame 60, we want to move this guy to the side. So what I'm going to do, go into my wireframe, go to the top view, and I'm going to go G and hold and control and just move it to the side so it snaps in exactly on that grid like we did before. And then what I'm going to do is go I and insert a location key on frame 60. So let's go into our camera view, go to frame one, and hopefully this is going to work. So fingers crossed. And then it goes back. 
and the simulation looks seamless. So I know it's a little bit fast. I deliberately did this because I like it fast and it's just my choice, but you can come in here, make the frames a little bit more and just space these keyframes out a bit more just to do the same thing. I'm sure you guys can figure that out. So here we have our scene done. So now we're gonna get into our lighting and our materials. Okay, so I'm gonna start by going to my render settings here and we're gonna make sure the render engine is set to EV. So by default it should be. So if it's not, just change it to EV. Enable ambient inclusion, go down and enable screen space reflections. So once you've done that, um, we can add in some lighting. So what I'm gonna do is go Shift A, gonna go empty, not empty, sorry, light, and we're gonna add in an area light. Then I'm gonna go G, Z, and just move it up to here. And then I'm just gonna scale the light up to something like about five meters, and then go S, X, and scale it along the X a little bit, and increase the strength into the hundreds. So I'm gonna go into my camera view, go to rendered, and I'm gonna keep dragging this power value up till it's, yeah, that's looking good. And then what I'm gonna do is go to my right orthographic view, go Shift D, Duplicate this guy and rotate it, and then shift D one more time and then rotate it. So I go to my camera view, I should see this for now, and I could also maybe just rotate one of these a little bit from the top to about here. So just keep messing around with it till you get some sort of lighting that you like. Okay, I'm gonna go with this, and what I'm gonna do is just select all three of these lights, go to my top orthographic view and then go shift D, X and just move them to the scene roughly in the same location here. So we want both of these lights to kind of be the same. So when it moves over, we don't see any sort of like clipping or anything that doesn't make sense. It's just smooth and seamless. So let's have a look at that. And it moves over and it happens again. Okay, that's looking really good. So let's add our material. So the first thing I'm gonna add a material to is this guy here. So I'm gonna select it, then go to my shading, go to my camera view over here, go Z and go render. And I'm gonna add a kind of pinkish color to this, like this, increase the brightness a little bit. Then I'm gonna select this floor here. And the floor, I wanna make kind of like a greenish kind of color. So I'm gonna go for something like that, make it a little bit darker. And I wanna add a texture to this. I'm gonna go Shift A, go Search, get a noise texture, plug the color into the, the base color here. So I'm gonna go Shift A, Search, and get a texture coordinate and plug the object into the vector here. And then I'm gonna go Shift A, search and get a color ramp node. Take the color ramp and put it in between the noise and the principal shader. And then we're gonna drag this black value in and drag this white value into about here till we can start seeing some details. So maybe like this, so just mess around with it till you can start seeing detail. And then we're gonna take the scale here and increase it. Keep dragging it up, get something you like. And, I'm, and this is just a matter of kind of sliding these around to get something you like. I might put the white value on this side. So just get a kind of speckled effect going. And I'm gonna grab this green, this black value here and just make it kind of like that green that we had earlier. Like just something that you like. Um, yeah, just mess around with it. I'm gonna go something like that for now. And then I'm gonna bring my roughness down. So it's a little bit more reflective. And then what I'm gonna do is grab this plane here in the bottom, and I'm gonna give that a material. So what we're gonna do is come to our material settings here, go to the surface, and we're just gonna make this an emission. And then you can make the emission color whatever you want. I'm gonna kind of go with a color that's kind of like peachy, like this. And yeah, so here we have it. We can grab our bowling pin, make the white material a little bit more glossy by bringing the roughness down, make the red material glossy as well but we want to come in here and just give that a red material, like that. So there we have our bowling pins. And this scene is starting to look really cool. And um, let's just play it quickly and see what it looks like. Yeah, and because we duplicated all of these, we added all the materials to both sides before we duplicated it, now all of those materials should automatically be on here as well. So we don't have to carry anything over. It's just a nice seamless job. So just goes back, slides over to the side and the whole thing repeats again. Um, so I'll show you guys quickly how you can render this out. So we can do is go to your layout um, and then go back to your output settings here. And then what you can do is go to your output settings here, click on a little folder, go anywhere in your desktop where you want to save this out and go accept. Go to your file format, make it FFmpeg, come to your encoding 
and you want to make the container something like an MP4 peg, and then come to your quality um, output quality and make it perceptually lossless. So now if you went here to render, and you went render animation, it'll render it out to your desktop or wherever you selected in this folder. So I hope you guys found this tutorial useful. That I hope it's been educational. So you can see this is it. Um, you can add it to your portfolio. You can use this technique to make all sorts of really awesome stuff. So this has been a Pixar 3D tutorial and I'll see you guys next time. And like I said in the beginning, you guys who are on Patreon will be getting this project file.